Evet, e, herkese iyi akşamlar. E, değerli meslektaşlarım, e, Üreme Tıbbi ve Cerrahi Derneği'nin bu akşamki webinarına hoş geldiniz. Bu akşamki webinarımız e, ustalardan, gerçekten de bu konunun dünyaca ünlü ustaları, e, histeri, zor histeroskopik vakaları videolar eşliğinde bizlerle paylaşacaklar. Biz de hem videoları seyredeceğiz hem de onlara varsa sorularımızı ileteceğiz. Burada üç tane değerli e, usta, histeroskopin ustası var. Birisini ilk olarak e, hepinizin tanıdığı e, Doktor Stefano Betocci. Kendisi e, tarife de e, ta, tarife de gerek yok. Histeroskopinin e, inovatif e, yanında çok büyük katkıları olan çok büyük bir isim. Bir sürü e, enstrüman geliştiren bir isim, ofis histeroskopiyi geliştiren bir isim. E, sonra Ricai hocamız e, Türkiye'den. E, histeroskopinin gelişmesine büyük katkıları olan e, hocalarımızdan birisi. E, son eski e, Müllerian Anomali sınıflamasında Türkiye'den kendisinin e, danışılan e, kişi olarak da biliyoruz kendisini. E, gruba giren kişi olarak da biliyoruz. Ve en sonunda Marco Gergoli kendisi e, uzun yıllar Trieste ve Ljubljana Üniversitelerinde çalışmış ve eşrenin e, Special Interest Group of Reproductive Surgery'in koordinatörlüğünü uzun yıllar yapmış bir e, meslektaşımız. Ben fazla sözü uzatmadan e, ilk olarak Stefano Betocci'nin e, sunumlarıyla e, başlayacağım. E, okay, e, Dr. Betocci, welcome once again e, to our one of the activities of our society. It's so nice to see you back again e, one month after the Congress. Your lecture on the Congress was great. So we will be uh, happy and we will be uh, very excited to watch your videos and uh, hear your comments. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you uh, to all of you and particularly to my friend uh, Lekai Pabucu for the, for the invitation. I will immediately share my screen with you. And uh, I put together, I mean, all our cases are, let's say, uh, tough cases. Um, but I want to uh, show again to you probably something that you already know, but it's anyway uh, difficult cases. And here in front of you, you see a stenosis of the external cervical host. This, for some people, for some doctors, this looks like a very complicated procedure. Uh, do you see the, the video running? Or, because I don't see the video moving. Okay, yes. hold on a second. Uh, let's have, uh, let's try to see some, what's happened. Okay, let's me uh, give me one more time, second. Sorry for the technical issue. We tried to solve the problem before, but let me say if. I don't know what's happened, but this video don't want to run in the full screen mode. So I will try to do anyway in the um, in the not full screen mode. Okay, so give me one second. I'll put this one like this, and you will see through PowerPoint. But it, it, it I think it's the same for you. At the end of the story, it's the same. Okay. Okay, so this is PowerPoint, but it's, it's okay. So this is with this video. Okay, now it's running. So this is a, a pin dot uh, external uh, cervical. So you see the portio just in front of you, and you see this absolutely uh, close to invisible uh, external cervical os. What you have to do if you have to insert your scope. So take note that this instrument you see coming out from time to time from the tip of the scope, it's the grasping forceps, the crocodile grasping forceps. That is 1.6 millimeters, so it's very small, but it's so big compared to the ostium uh, that give you an idea about how small is the ostium. So if you are lucky and you see here, we are able to open the grasping forceps and to uh, broken the film additions that are located all around the, the ostium. Uh, by so doing, we allow, you see, the mucus to, to come out, to, to uh, be able to come out due to the different uh, uh, uh, surface tension. 
and then to introduce the scope using the 30 degree view and pressing the scope inside. And this is another case where the osteum looks the same, but uh, here, when we insert the grasping forcep inside, you see the grasping forceps is not able to broken the addition around the osteum. So this is a fibrotic osteum. It's a different from the previous one. And if you insist, you will probably broke broken your instrumentation. So here you see it's a very thick tissue. So to solve the problem, we take the scissors and we cut at three, uh, six, and, and nine hours with the uh, scissors. Don't be afraid uh, about pain, about discomfort, because the fibrotic tissue, the collagen tissue, is not sensitive, innervated. So you can cut this tissue without hurting the patient. And here again, and this also cuts, if you see this cut through a speculum, I mean, with your eyes, you will probably even not see uh, the, you will see some, let's say, uh, uh, red area, but nothing uh, bigger than that, because this is a very microscopic uh, incision. So you make your star cut, and then uh, you get in uh, with your uh, with your instruments. Uh, okay, as you see, it's being a very thick tissue, sometimes you have to refine, to recut in the different places. Uh, until uh, you, uh, uh, you have enough room for your scope uh, to get in. And uh, once you are inside, here you see you continue to cut and then you get, once you are inside, if the patient is a menopausal patient, you have close to 60% from our study of chance to see also a stenosis of the internal cervicals. Here is not a stenosis, it's a total occlusion of the internal cervical os, and you see, looking where the arbor vita goes, we just go in a limited area where the, all the arbor vita uh, uh, connect one to the other one, connects one to the other one, and you see, using the grasping forceps, we try to find our way. And here you see there are multiple cysts, mucous cysts that are occluding the area. Don't be afraid also to do this and don't be afraid if you see your instrument going in easily. You are not perforating the uterus. It's not so easy to perforate the uterus and particularly with an awake patient, you cannot do this without hurting the patient. So you see here also, instead of using the scissors to broken these filmy additions, we uh, use this semi-rotation on the grasping forceps uh, in order to broken these additions laterally and at the end to get inside the, the uterine cavity. On the opposite side, I show to you a very old video. This video belongs from 97, 98. Um, and it, you can recognize that it's an old video from the quality, first of all, of the video. It's not so precise like the present video. And from the use of that grasping forceps, that it's called spoon biopsy forceps. This was the old biopsy forcep before the, the, uh, the crocodile uh, uh, biopsy forceps. And here you see with the scissors, we were doing the same things inside the osteum. So you see, uh, it's been passed more than 20 years, uh, but we continue to, uh, I mean, we develop this technique and we continue to improve the technique and to solve the problem. So this is a surgery you need to do. This surgery, you need to perform this surgery before getting inside the uterine cavity. So you have to do a surgery to be diagnostic. It's a paradox, but it's like this. So uh, next slide, okay. Here you have, uh, we have uh, a office myomectomy performed uh, with, uh, uh, with the mini receptoscope. This is a video you can find on the internet on YouTube, uh, and it's a very interesting video. So let's jump over this part. And you have a nice music from Bocelli, but you need to hear my voice, I'm sorry. So if you want to uh, uh, listen Bocelli, you have to go on YouTube, on my YouTube channel and, and watch the video with Bocelli song. And you see this patient, uh, I, I was called in the hospital by colleagues, uh, younger colleagues, telling me uh, we are performing office hysteroscopy with a four millimeter hysteroscope, uh, but we are not able to pass the cervical canal. There is an incredible occlu occlusion. We think there is a natural man inside and so like this. At the end of the study, I, I went in with the office hysteroscope and I saw that there was no occlusion, but there were 
polyps first, and then three big myomas. One, this one, occluding completely the passage into the uterine cavity and dilatating, of course, the internal cervical os. And then two myoma inside kissing one each other. So I took the mineral stethoscope and I start removing the, uh, the myoma. And you see, this was a G0 myoma. You see that the myoma is just, uh, let's say, other end to the surface. And you see how difficult is to get into this cavity. So it was absolutely necessary to remove this myoma before being able to get into the uterine cavity. And then, uh, of course, this has been done totally in, uh, in, uh, in the ambulatory, so without any kind of sedation, analgesia, or, or, or whatever. Um, and the patient was watching with us for the same reason I told you before, because uh, the myoma is made by collagen tissue, and the collagen tissue is not sensitive in the You see, once we are able to remove uh, the uh, myoma including the cervix, then uh, we, are, we start to, to see the two kissing myoma. There is one myoma on the uh, right of the screen, uh, very, very nice, very visible. And then the uh, rest of the part of this myoma or another one connected to this myoma, kissing the other one and occluding completely the cap. You see the bridge, you see the uh, posteriorly and anteriorly, you see the, the uh, the passage into the uterine cavity. And the more we resect these myomas, uh, respecting the, the, the, the myometrial area, you see we are not cutting muscles fiber, but we, we are only cutting the, the myoma. Then uh, uh, step by step, you start uh, seeing the rest of the myoma. So this is, was really a difficult, tough case. But thanks to the use of the mineral cytoscope that I consider today, the perfect partner of in the past was the bipolar electrode. Today is still the bipolar electrode, but certainly this is more powerful, more efficient than the uh, bipolar electrode. And you see here, we continue to make the reception. I go a little bit of, uh, uh, forward. Uh, and you see here, this is the connection between myoma number one and myoma number two. Okay, so we have to go behind the myoma number uh, one, the one we are resecting, and try to resect completely the, uh, the bridge. So first we have to, we have to uh, remove the myoma. And then uh, you see turning, probably turning the electrodes. Here we are. Turning the electrodes, we start resecting the bridge, the connection part between the two myoma until uh, myoma two gets totally free. You know, here, okay, we still continue with the resection. And this is the removal of the bridge between the two myomas. And you see how efficient is the bipolar the mini, uh, the bipolar mini receptoscope. Here we are, okay. And you see the bridge has been totally eliminated. So now we are. We have enough room to resect the intramural part of the myoma number one, and then we will concentrate our action on the myoma number two. Uh, so endometrium is uh, does not have sensitivity, but okay. so here myoma? we are cleaning the area uh, with the myoma, not touching the mus the muscle, the myometrium, uh, respecting the pseudo capsula the way you know very well. And slowly the cavity is perfectly, almost perfectly clean. Okay. Here, there is the final part. You see, respect, we always respect the pseudo capsula. We never resect the, the pseudo capsula and therefore the uh, myometrium. You see, only the myoma is visible to you. Okay. And then once the myoma is gone on the lateral wall, then we start resecting the uh, uh, opposite part, okay? And the opposite part, it's, uh, it's faster because it's uh, more clean, the myoma. It's not affected, it's just, you know, not like the one on the opposite wall. And we slowly get also to the point. And you will see, uh, uh, you see, we don't uh, remove the chips in the classic way, we just 
bring the chips hand by hands and we move the chips out without keeping the chips in between the loop because otherwise we will broken this very thin loop. And you see here the, the pinkish tissue and the white tissue. And you see how we hang, we hang the myoma and you see the pseudo capsula over there. So this is just the idea of full respect here, you know, coagulation of the vessels on the pseudo capsula. And once you hang the myoma, then the myoma is done. You see, and slowly, slowly we go to the point. I will uh, show to you almost the end. Chips flows away. This is the best way because these chips are three millimeter or less in diameter. And you see at the end, the cavity is perfectly clean, perfectly clean. No residual of the myoma, nothing. And this is a normal uterus compared to the disaster we, uh, when we get inside the, the uterus at the beginning. Okay, and then the, la the second and last case, this is also on internet. And this is, has, has been defined uh, myoma, a septum with surprise. So this was done, uh, this was a, a metroplasty done uh, when we start our, uh, uh, our study that you probably know and you remember from Antalya, um, the study about uh, you know, the histology of the myoma. So uh, we were still uh, resecting the uh, septum in this way using the mineral cystoscope. The study was almost at the end. So we were not collecting anymore the chip by chip. And this was the surprise. There was a myoma inside the septum not at the end of the septum, just in the middle of the septum, much closer to the tip than to the fundus of the uterus. And then you can realize this as soon as the mineral cystoscope goes on the opposite uh, cornua, here we are, look how long is still the septum, okay? It's so long here that is the, give you the idea that the myoma is exactly in the middle or probably much closer to the tip. So we have to resect the septum as we did it. Today, we don't resect the septum like this. We broken first the septum using the, uh, using the uh, knife or the loop, or call it one, the, the, the L-shaped uh, electrode. And then we resect the posterior, the anterior triangle of fibrotic tissue. So we made myoma to be much easier. But look at here, the myoma, it's getting more visible inside, inside the septum. And uh, once the septum has been resected completely, then uh, we approach uh, classic uh, myomectomy. you see? Okay, vessels are immediately coagulated. Otherwise you will not see anything inside. And if you don't see, you are, uh, let's say you have a high risk to run in troubles. So you see, uh, we've broken all the addition of the pseudo capsula, and then the myoma is almost a G0 myoma. Before it was completely hidden inside the, the septum, and then myoma has been resected. And the septum also uh, has been resected. Okay. So these are, okay, this is the myoma. You see almost pedunculate. And then the myoma is resected also, you see, and then fully respect of the muscles around. So we resect only the myoma and we look at the color of the tissue. We hang the, we hang the myoma with the electrode and we resect the electrode. We resect the myoma. You see the pseudo capsula, it's a pinkish tissue and the myoma, it's a white tissue. You see this movement of hanging um, the myoma with the loop, not too much, but just to give you the sensation, the, the, the, myoma, the, the myoma is in between your loop and the, and the myoma itself. At the end of the myoma, it's hanged, it's fixed in your loop, and then you activate the loop. This is excellent in order to uh, remove the myoma without uh, having a risk of removing the good muscle. I go just at the end because I think my time is almost finished. And you see here, Miami is not anymore there, and we end the resection of the septum. 
So I'll show you a final view of the cavity. Okay, this is almost a final view without the septum, without the myoma. There is the fovea of the myoma on the top that we don't touch, and the septum is being completely built. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm looking if there are any questions. Uh, maybe I can ask you uh, about the kissing myomas. What yes. kind of precaution have you used to prevent uh, adhesion formation because there are two kissing myomas? Yeah, uh, for preventing adhesion, we use since already three years, uh, we use a, a gel, a hyaluronic gel for hysteroscopy. It's called BioRegen. And it's a very good gel. It's cheap. I mean, at least it's the cheapest now on the market, in my knowledge. And it's, uh, I, it has a good viscosity, not too much. Uh, it means that you can insert the gel through your hysteroscope or through your receptoscope without, uh, uh, let's say, without big problem. It also has an excellent side effect, let me say, that is that once you insert under visualization, under hysteroscopic view, the gel, you see that immediately all the uh, open vessels stop bleeding. And this is for me, it's even better than uh, additions prevention because you know it guarantees you that you will not have, will not have bleeding uh, afterwards. And particularly in a septum that it's a very bleeding surgery, much more than myoma, this is an excellent, uh, excellent uh, uh, solution. Hem ayrılmasın da konuşmanın sonunda yine fikrini alalım. Okay, so uh, uh, now uh, we will move on with the next speaker. Uh, Dr. Betoji, if you can uh, stay with us, maybe there may be some further questions coming yeah, up. I will disactivate my microphone and my camera, but I will hear, okay? Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. So, uh, şimdi ikinci sırada Recai hocamızın videolarını seyredeceğiz. Yine sorular varsa yazalım. Hem bu esnada hem de konuşmalar bitince cevaplayacak Recai hocam. Hocam. Arkadaşlar hepinize iyi akşamlar. Nasıl konuşalım arkadaşlara? Türkçe mi konuşalım? İngilizce mi? Nasıl yapalım? Hocam Türkçe konuşalım. Zaten videoları seyrediyorlardı misafirler. Okay. Peki o zaman şimdi bu başlatma. Bu vakamız histerosalpingografide unicorn gibi gözüküyor. Fakat ultrasonografik muayenede e, septum gözüküyordu e, ve e, devam edelim. Hocam, e, hocam şehir yapabilir misiniz ekranı? Göremiyoruz e, videoyu. Tamam, pardon. Görüldü mü? Şimdi göründü hocam. Evet, bu, burada sağda bir kavite görüyorsunuz. Unicorn gibi bir kavite görüyorsunuz. Ee, hemen ofis histeroskopiye geçiyoruz. Fakat ofis histeroskopide hep sağ, sağ kaviteyi görüyoruz. Bir türlü e, sol kavitenin girişi görülmüyor. Tabii bu bizler için zor bir vaka. Normal eğer iki kavite girişini ortadan bir yerden bulsak başlayıp hemen işi bitireceğiz ama biraz daha ileriye alalım. Maalesef Burada birazcık daha ileriye alıyorum. Evet, gidiyoruz ama hala bir şey yok. Sadece kavitenin solu gözüküyor. Evet, biraz daha alalım. Şey pardon, sağı gözüküyor. Sağ kavitedeyiz. Sol hiç gözükmüyor. Buradan biraz esinlendik. Acaba sağa mı giriyoruz diye ama maalesef o da bir endometriyum katlantısıymış. Buradan da kaviteden ümidimizi kestik. Buradan da giremedik. Birazcık daha gidelim. Evet. Görüyorsunuz hala sağ kavitedeyiz ve giriş yok. Bu sefer acaba... Histereskopun operatif kısmıyla nasıl gideriz diye biraz alalım. Evet gördünüz hala sağ sağ sağ sola geçiş yok. Operatife başladık. 
Operatiften sağ kaviteden artık olmayana ergiyle dönüyorum. Geliyorum, geliyorum, geliyorum. Bir yerde yakalayacağım diye ümit ediyorum. Evet, şurada bir açıklık buldum. Ve gördünüz, oradan bir bir polar kullanıyoruz. Evet, buradan bir kesi yaptık. Tamamen ama sağ kavitenin e, solundan girerek bunu buldum. Şimdi bakın, evet, biraz daha fibroz dokuyu kestik. İşte şurada gördünüz kavitenin e, diğer kısmına ulaştık. Marco, can you see that? Finally, on the left side, I found and the entrance. And I then, see, I see. Uh, at the beginning, it was impossible to find the right way, but the right now, it is very easy to cut the septum because we saw from which part of the septum we will be starting, right? Yeah, it's the orientation. Yeah, and then it is easy. Evet, görüyorsunuz arkadaşlar. Bundan sonra uh, we are trying to reach the tubal osteal area. When we see the both tubal osteal part at the same line, the surgery will be finishing. And then uh, again, the septum is quite large-based septum, and then, but it is very easy to cut if you do the surgery from the fibrous tissue. Evet arkadaşlar gördüğünüz gibi e, bu taraf bitti. 90 derece çevirerek biraz da buradan gidelim. Evet. Resmi koyabilir misin? Bundan sonrası çok kolay. Yani özetlersem hadise bu. Buradan şu dersi almamız lazım. Böyle unicorn gibi gördüğünüz vakalarda, unicorn gibi gördüğünüz vakalarda eğer uterusun fundusunu tek görüyorsanız e, o zaman e, bu özellikle şu şey alanında şu girişi zorlanıyorsunuz ama şurayı bulduktan sonra Cerrahinizin çok kolay olacağını unutmayın. Fakat bu girişi bulmak çok zor, çok önemli. Sadece bunu belirtmek istedim. Evet, şimdi ikinci vakaya geçelim. İkinci vakamız bu da 8 yıllık evli. Filmi böyle, bir filmi daha var. Bu film, bu, bunun uh, Marco, this is the second cases. But this lady has previous Operative, operative hysteroscopy surgery, but unfortunately, they, when they came to my office, I saw the septum again on, on the ultrasonographic examination, under the un, ultrasonographic examination, and then uh, I sent to hysterosalpingography, and then the uh, situation was like this, and then uh, this lady has had previous underwent previous operative hysteroscopic surgery. I didn't understand, but uh, uh, when I performed the office hysteroscopy, the situation like this, I think the previous surgeon, I think the previous surgeon uh, thought that this entrance was like tubal osteum and then Uh, left the surgery. Yani arkadaşlar cerrah bunu ilk gördüğünde bunu tübal ostayım gibi görmüş. Devam edelim. Tübal ostayım gibi görmüş arkadaşımız. Biraz git. Ofise geç. Evet. E, ve hemen ben operatife geçtiğim zaman görüyorsunuz çok geniş tabanlı bir siktum ve e, yavaş yavaş cerrahi ilerlettik. Yani demek ki burada da yanılgı ne? Yanılgı o şey e, fibroz doku çok kalın olduğu zaman arkadaşımız bunu şey gibi görmüş. E, ofis histeroskopide normal görünüş gibi görmüş. 
Bakın ancak buradan bir yeni yol bulduk. Şimdi evet şimdi bakın artık iki kaviteye ulaşıp onu tek bir kavite haline getirmek çok kolay. Bu vakada double vaginal septum var. Burada da yanılgı şu. HSG çekilmiş bu. Bana bununla geldi. Ben her muayenede hastayı vajinal tuşa ederim. Vajinal septumu var mı diye böyle mülleryen anomalilerde. Hemen tuşa da elime vajinal septum geldi. Hastayı bir daha HSG'ye gönderdim. Burada gördüğünüz gibi sağ kaviteyi de gördüm. Çok geniş bir septumdu zaten. Evet hemen cerrahiye geçtik. Cerrahide de iki ayrı kaviteye girildi. Bu ofis histereskopik bulgusu. Mutlaka ofisle bir kontrol etmek lazım operatif histereskopiye geçmeden önce. Bu sağ ustuyum, diğeri de sol. Evet, bu vajeni kestikten sonra, vajeni e, toparladıktan sonra hemen başlangıçtan itibaren görüyorsunuz bu aşağıdan kesilen vajinal septumun kalıntıları ve yukarıya doğru giderek e, ben prensip olarak hiçbir şekilde e, doku bırakıp öyle servikste doku falan bırakmanın bir anlamı yok. Eğer yetmezlik oluyor tabii zaten bunların çoğunda var. Bunlara bir dikiş atarsınız olur biter. Bir sürü distosu ile uğraşmak doğru değil. Zaten bu görü bu konuda da görüş ayrılıkları var. Görüyorsunuz uterin septum bundan sonra son derece kolay bir şekilde kesiliyor. Evet. Marco, this lady at the beginning, the uh, appearance was like unicorn, and then uh, after detecting the vaginal septum, and then uh, we saw that uh, complete vaginal and then uh, uterine septum, and we did the surgery after cutting the vaginal septum, and completely we tried to cut the all fibrous septum until uh, the tubal osteal. But the service Line. was unique service. Yes, service was unique. And then the, uh, but the, the basic part of the septum, as you see, was so thick. But uh, we have to be carefully, especially when we see the blue lead vessel, we should remove a little bit from the vessel level and we should go uh, a little bit up uh, until the again fibrous tissue so and then it is very easy to cut as we can see Görüyorsunuz ne kadar geniş bir septum. Taban. Bakın mavi tabakalar gözüktü. Artık oralardan değil daha üstlere bu fibroz dokulardan kesip genişletmek lazım. Bu da yok mu? Filmi nerede onun? Peki. E, ameliyat bitti. Bu da e, hem geniş bir septum hem de T-shaped uterus. Evet. Marco, this lady has three abortions and then the picture like, was like this and the myometrial thickness on the lateral wall was more than uh, 18 or 1950 millimeter something like that with 3D ultrasonography. And then we tried to cut both septum and T-shape together. And as you see here, we started to do surgery. The septum again is too large. And then to, to fibrous tissue. So the surgery is like this. Uh, 
Bakın burada mesela görüntü şimdi biraz kötüleşti. Niye? Kavite genişletti, sıvı genişledi. Kaviteye sıvı yetmiyor. Hemen musluğu kapayın arkadaşlar burada. Biraz daha kavite genişlesin. Size buradaki gibi bakın daha geniş bir görüş alanı verir. Evet, cerrahi neredeyse bitecek. Evet, daha ulaşmaya çalışıyoruz. Tübal osteal alanlara doğru. Bakın, orada bir sinüs gibi bir açı var. Korkmayın, perforasyon yok. Hala serbest dokudayız, fibroz doku. Fibroz tişi istilkat. Şimdi buraya geldi mi 90 derece çevirmemiz lazım hemen diğer tarafa gitmemiz için. Bu zaten hepimizin bildiği prensip. Evet. Şimdi de T-shape kısmını gördünüz. Bu da postoperatif görünümü görüyorsunuz. Ameliyat son derece başarılı bir durumda. This is the postoperatif picture of HD. Dizlaydı. Bundan sonra 2-3 tane adezyon göstereceğim size. Bu hastamızın çok ciddi şekilde histerosalpingografide sadece aletin ucu gözüküyor görüyorsunuz. On the preoperative picture of SG, HCG, HSG. And then now we are trying to cut the inside of the fibrous tissue. And then You see very, very thick adhesion. Two weeks later, arkadaşlar, pardon, iki hafta sonra buraya bir spiral koyduk ameliyat sonunda. Benden bunun kılavuzluğunda şimdi ikinciyi görüyorsunuz. Marco, two weeks later we are performing second look hysteroscopy under the guidance of the copper T IUD. So the arms of copper T are showing us to which direction we should, uh, we should go. Of course, our goal should be to reach the tubal ostia. And then the arms of IUD is showing us which adhesive tissue should be cut. Okay. This lady has typical uh, story. Dur burada. Uh, with my IVF therapy, she's got pregnant. And then the, unfortunately at 12 or 13 weeks of her pregnancy had abortion. And they did uh, in other clinic, they did uh, DNC. And then unfortunately the picture was like this. Uh, it, uh, they they performed uh, hysteroscopic surgery and they put the IUD and then unfortunately the hysterosalpingographic picture was like this. So I uh, I tried to do office hysteroscopy. We are always using uh, hysteroscopic adhesiolysis under ultrasonographic examination by using office hysteroscopy. Yes. Uh, you see inside of the cavity is confusing. 
there are many, many tick and uh, tick adhesion, and then we are trying to cut all of them. But uh, this uh, lady was lucky because the uh, she didn't have the long story, long time story. And then after surgery, the appearance was like this, and she's got pregnant, and she had healthy baby. Okay. Uh, other case. Other case, unfortunately, underwent operative hysteroscopic surgery for T-shaped. It is very awful appearance. So the cavity was completely was obliterated. And then I did, I, uh, I tried to do, uh, I tried to open the cavity by using hysteroscopic seizure. You see, there are a lot of fibrous tissue. It was impossible to see tubal osteal area. Still, uh, we started from the lateral wall of the uterus by cutting this adhesion. Arkadaşlar görüyorsunuz burada maalesef kim olduğunu veya kimler olabileceğini düşünüyorsunuz. Yani lütfen hastaya zarar vermememiz lazım. Yani bu hastaya çok zarar verilmiş. Yan duvarlar olduğu gibi bu haldeydi. Şu anda bu hasta adet görüyor ama daha gebe kalamadı. Şimdi de endometriyumla uğraşıyoruz. Biraz sonra kaviteyi daha iyi bir halde göreceksiniz ama işte ancak biraz böyle spotting kanamalar başlayabildi. Şimdi bununla ilgili soru gelecek. Rudi Campo'nun bizim kongrede şeyini izlediniz. Bu tip cerrahilere, ağır aşarmanlara sup endometriyal PRP yapıp silikon balon koyuyor artık. Bu silikon balon iki ay kalıyor. Pediatrik foley değil. Özel hazırlanmış bir balon. Evet burada görüyorsunuz. Sadece kaviteyi açtık. Biz de başladık bu sup endometriyal. Yine histereskopun kontrolünde veriyorsunuz bu şeyi. Su PRP'yi. Marco, I, uh, at the end of the session I, want, uh, session, I want to have your idea because as Rudy Campo performed we are also started to perform uh, prp to subendometrial tissue of the uterus yani görüyorsunuz işte bu şeyden sonra balondan sonra biraz fayda görecek Evet. I can skip. Tamam, bu kadar yeter buraya. Evet, işte kavite bu kadar. Bunun dışına da çıkamıyorsunuz. Maalesef tübal osteyalara gitmek mümkün değil. İlerleyelim. Bir de tüberküloz göstereyim. Bitireceğim ondan sonra. Yok, şey Yok o T-shaped. Bir daha öne gelelim arkaya. Filmini göster.
Arkadaşlar filmini kaçırdım hızlı gideyim diye. Burada bir tüberküloz vakası. Zaten şimdi gelirsem HSG'sini de görürsünüz. Bunun da kavitesi oldukça iyi açıldı. Adet görüyor ama bu da henüz gebe kalamadı. Bu da benim takip ettiğim hastalardan bir tanesi. Görüyorsunuz çok yapışıklı içerisi. Evet bu gördüğünüz vaka. Evet. T, Y ne diyorsanız deyin. Bu kadın hiç adet görmüyor. Buna daha önce histereskopi yapılmış. Marco, this is typically T-shaped or Y-shaped uterus and she had amenorrhea. Nobody was able to enter inside of the cavity. They couldn't pass the internal uh, the cervical channel. So uh, we did hysteroscopic procedure, first of all. And then this is the office hysteroscopy. You see some suture because the during the opening uh, of the cervical channel, there was some laceration and I put some suture to the cervix. You saw the sutures and then still we are trying to pass the cervical channel and then passed and then we passed the operative hysteroscopy. And then now we are trying to open the lateral wall the lateral uh, thickness of the lateral wall more than 25 millimeters. You see very dense fibrous tissue. Evet görüyorsunuz artık hafifte bir subseptus hali var ama kavite gidecek diye insan korkuyor tabii fazla ileri gitmeye. Çok küçük bir uterus hiç adet görmüyordu. Şimdi adet görmeye başladı ağrısız oluyor adetleri çok ağrılı adet görüyordu. Gördünüz biraz daha kavite açıldı yukarıda. Fundal kısım da fena gözükmüyor. Tam şunun arkasında. Bak öyle mi? Hala kesmeye devam ediyoruz. Bu serinin en zor vakaları bunlar tabi. Bakın arkadaşlar dur dur. Bu da o deminki resimden sonraki post operatif HSG'si bu hastanın. Şu anda hasta adet görüyor. Tüplerine de bir zarar vermemişiz. Şurada çok azıcık üstte bir doku var ama onu da belki bir seans daha yapılabilir. Bundan sonra miyomlar var. Onu Betuç'u gösterdi. Ben bu kadar deyip kesiyorum sevgili Cem. Teşekkür ederim. Evet, çok teşekkür ederiz. Ben e, hemen e, Marco Gergolet'in konuşmasına geçeyim ki e, çok geç kalmayalım. Sonra sorulara bakarız beraber. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Gergode, it's now your turn. We, are, we will be excited to see your videos and comments. Okay, good evening to all. I will share my, uh, my screen.
Okay. Okay, and here is the. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Very nice uh, uh, evening and very nice uh, webinar. Very interesting. Uh, I will start with. Uh, I had. I have two cases, particular, very, very particular. The first is a patient which was born in 1989. Uh, in 2014, she experienced a spontaneous miscarriage and she had dilatation curettage. And uh, she had two times dilatation curettage because the first time they didn't evacuate all the uterus. Then in 2015, she had a. They tried to do a metroplasty for some tight uterus, but they didn't finish the operation. I didn't understand what they did. And uh, after this operation, she experienced a severe oligomenorrhea. And uh, then uh, she under uh, she undergone other three hysteroscopies, diagnostic, and in all the three cases, they uh, concluded that she has Asherman syndrome. So she came to my office in 2017. She was 29, 28. And uh, at that time, uh, on the on the 10 date of uh, menstrual cycle, she had an endometrium of only two millimeters. It was practical, practically impossible to see the, the cavity and the in the in the in the endometrium. So we went before I went before to do a, a diagnostic hysteroscopy, and uh, but with the intention of to conclude the operation with the with the operative hysteroscopy. And uh, uh, this is a normal office hysteroscope under general anesthesia in deep van. And uh, she had a lot of adhesions. And uh, uh, I have done this hysteroscopy under ultrasound control. Now you see this is the, we are going to the internal cervical os. And we see here you find we find it a wall, a complete wall, no uh, entrance to the uterus. Only here was seem to be some uh, adhesions, and uh, uh, I tried to force the adhesion just with the pressure and with the tip of the hysteroscope. Uh, trying to don't uh, to not losing the uh, uh, the orientation and uh, uh, because we was looking for a set because she come uh, to to my office because of a septate uterus she told and either me or the ultrasonographist who was keeping the, the ultrasound probe on the, on the abdomen was looking uh, where is the fundus. So uh, it was diffi difficult to understand if this was the cavity or still the cervix. I was, I needed to be a little bit, uh, uh, I have a little bit of uh, courage to to enter, and uh, this is the second part of the video of the diagnostic part of the video. But at the end, thanks also to the to the ultrasound control, was I was able to enter to the cavity. Just with a blunt dissection, you will see now. And now we'll see how on the, this part, on this part, there was the entrance was completely on the on the left side of the patient. So I didn't understand if this is the, only the left horn of the complete septum or what, because all the uh, the 
adhesions was developing on the left side of the of the cervical canal of the of the of the uterus but this was the only part that was possible to have some additions and now forcing a little bit more the addition you see how we will enter into the cavity all all, all this is cervical canal but still was not clear if there is a complete septum uh, and I was looking also on this side, on the rest, right side, if there was some uh, entrance to the to the to the right side of the uterus. It was very strange. I'll just go a little bit faster, but at the end, you will see how it was possible to enter into the cavity. Uh, just a little bit, you will see here. Oh, finally, just I got a little bit uh, back. No, let me find it uh, when I enter the cavity. And you see here at the end we can we we we found a hole and was able to distend the uterine cavity and we have seen that uh, uh, the uterus was not a septate uterus but was a t-shaped uterus we'll see now But this was only with blunt dissection. Okay. So here is the here you see the left. The here is the left side, uh, left uh, uh, tuberosity, but this is not septum. This is this is uh, uh, only adhesions and the uh, Asherman syndrome. There was no septum. In this cavity, I don't know if the uh, uh, this addition will became uh, additions after the after the curettage or after the operative hysteroscope, which she was done in another setting. Now we see here a tubal ostium, the, the left tubal ostium here, and this is still. Uh, uh, adhesions and and on this side the right tubal right tubal ostium and then I changed my tool and I took the Gubini mic uh, mini resectoscope you will see now in a few seconds okay and uh, after Blood dissection, I took this uh, instrument, which is a five millimeter uh, mini resectoscope, the Gubini mini resectoscope, and I was able to perform the, the uh, um, metropathy for the T shaped uterus. And you will see uh, in the upper and the uh, lower part of the, of the cavity uh, all the Former additions, which was uh, dissected, which was dissected. You see here, all here, are, all, all, all this part was closed by additions. You know, you see, so that was very difficult to enter into the cavity. I suggest that in these cases, when you when you don't know where you are, uh, it's better to have the ultrasound on the abdomen to understand if you are. 
close to the fundus or, or not. And this is the right side of the lateral wall. You see the, the incision of the fundus was minimal, just one, two millimeters. The rest of the so-called setum was only uh, was only additions. Were only additions. The, the, the biggest problem of the patient was the, this T-shaped uterus. Very fibrotic, no bleeding. Okay. And it's you see here the the the, the upper part of the cavity, the cavity this is all. For also this, this only adhesions. You see, that these are the old adhesions that we are going to remove because this was not only yeah. And we just the septum was only this two millimeters. You see here the the hand, the the, the pointer. This is the only this part was the, the small septum or the small indentation. You will say not septum because it was especially. Uh, as a T shaped uterus and not, and not as a pet uterus. You see, we just uh, try to uh, to cut a little of some millimeters the fundus in order to have a normal cavity. And we are reaching the muscular layer here. You see, closing the closing the water, you you can see if you have if you have the the, the, the right the right layer. Okay, and the cavity, but you see here, all this part was closed by adhesions. And this one is very nice. Because it's very small, you don't need to do to go to dilate, to dilatate. You go uh, inside by vaginoscopy because it's only five point three millimeters tool, and it can be either, either monopolar or bipolar. No problem. It works. It works with two different electrons, but uh, uh, can be monopolar or bipolar. So now we have a normal cavity. Let's go to see the outcome. And just here a little bit, we are looking, we're going to cut a little bit here. I prefer the electricity than, than the, uh, uh, the uh, now we are going out of the water, we have to change the, the, uh, water uh, I prefer the electro surgery than the cold scissor but it's a matter of how your of your preferences and see the how the cavity is now you see the the the, the, the left tubal ostium Which is okay. We we reach the fundus normally. Just the last. It's okay. Okay. So, uh, which was the outcome of, of this uh, uh, um, patient? So, uh, in 2018, she had the first pregnancy, and after the first attempt, attempt to IVF, 
she delivered at 40 weeks with vaginal delivery, but he sh she has uterine atony and uh, blood transfusion. But in uh, 2020, she had another pregnancy, uh, this time with spontaneous conception, delivered at 39 weeks. Uh, with vaginal delivery and normal postpartum, uh, normal postpartum, but uh, this patient was not lucky with her uterus because uh, soon after, soon after delivery, she experienced me menometro, menometro agia, and I found her adenomyosis. Now, so the, three weeks ago, I have uh, given her the Mirena intrauterine system because of this problem of the adenomyosis and menometro agia. And this is the first case. The second case is a case of a patient born in 1919. Uh, she had a complete septate uterus, double cervix, and longitudinal non obstructive vaginal septum. But she was, she came to my office with another diagnosis. She was in another setting when they uh, uh, diagnosed another malformation. But will we go to see this malformation? So we have a, a complete septate uterus, so UB. Uh, U2B, uh, according to the uh, European classification, and uh, she had a septate cervix C1 and uh, a longitudinal non obstructive vaginal septum. But she was uh, diagnosed in another setting, such as a bicorporeal septate uterus with double cervix and longitudinal vaginal septum. So not uh, C2B, uh, but C, uh, U3C. Uh, C2 and B1. Uh, her husband was okay. She experienced two, two years of infertility. And uh, it was very funny because in uh, ultra, 3D ultrasound, they said, okay, we see the left horn, but we cannot see the right horn. So I, she, I had performed her the, uh, the 3D ultrasound. And I said, no, I, I said, this is not a bicorporeal uterus, but this is a, a complete septate uterus because you see the fundus which is normal, we have the, and we see here the two, the two uh, hemicavities uh, divided by a septum. And uh, so I was really not sure that I was okay, but they say this image is quite clear, but since a colleague, which is very good, said this is a bicorporeal uterus, but I cannot see the, the left uh, cor uh, cornum, the left uh, horn, I refer her also to MRI to confirm this, and also the MRI, we see how uh, the uh, radiologists confirm the, the, the complete uterine septum, and also the septate cervix with a longitudinal uh, vaginal septum. So uh, uh, with the patient decided to, uh, com to uh, not cut the uh, cervical septum in order to avoid um, um, cervical uh, uh, incompetence during the pregnancy. And uh, uh, I performed the so-called so uh, uh, cervical, cervical sparing surgery. So the technique is to go with uh, uh, uh, the hagars and increasing the, the, the number of the hagar and try to force the two hagars one to create, create a friction in the lower part of the septum where the septum is thinner. And this friction increasing the number from five in the, five in the, in the, in the left, then five and a half in, this, in the right, then five, uh, five in the left and six in the high, and so on, increasing in, until nine, uh, Hagar nine, in order to create this friction and to interrupt the septum on the lower part and to, in order to uh, conserve the, uh, the cervical septum uh, because of the cervical competence during pregnancy. After, uh, after uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, this is how it looked after the, the uh, Hagar uh, friction. You will see here the set which is interrupted. This is the left cavity. The visualization is not okay because there was uh, a lot of the mucus, mucosa, mucosa flaps. Uh, also because the uh, resectoscope in this case was a 26 uh, French resectoscope. And we see here the, the uh, left part and the septum and the right part of the, of the, of the uterus. This is the muc uh, mucosa flaps. Uh, at the beginning, I started with the, uh, uh, the 
Uh, equatorial, equatorial loop. The set was not, uh, was long and thin, not uh, uh, wide at the end. You will see how it is completely thin. And this is the section with the quadrilateral loop. The problem was a lot of mucosa flaps, so the video is not very nice because of the mucosa flaps or the endometrium endometrial flaps. You see, very noisy. Again. Because you know it was difficult to see the end of the cavity, but at the end it was possible to to to reach the the level of the tuberosia. We knew that it was not a bicorporeal, so it was quite uh, uh, not worried about the propositive of perforation because it's not we were sure there was not uh, that there was not a bicorporeal uterus, but it was a septate uterus. Uh, so it's not a problem to reach the level of the tubal ostia. And in this case, the 3D ultrasound is very useful because you can exactly measure the, <coughs> uh, the um, thickness between uh, the, the level of the tubal ostia to the out, outline of the uterus. We are almost at the end. You see how long is the septum? It was a complete septum or and now we will see. As we see once I reach the, uh, the, the fundus, the level of the tuba ostia, we see some small vessel, but the tissue is very fibrotic. Okay, almost there. Your seconds. Okay, and uh, then there was a problem to cut also the uh, the upper part of the of the cervical channel, uh, and then I went with the Collis knife in order to uh, cut from the inside part uh, to the, you know, this is the middle middle part of the, which was cut it. Now here is the septum of the, of the cervix, which was a little bit too long. And then I just cut a little bit of the cervix, of the cervical uh, septum in order to have, uh, to preserve the cervix, one cervix, uh, to preserve the, the, the, the septum, but not, not too much in order to have a little bit more space in the uterine cavity in the uterine cavity. So uh, I cut just the part, the part of the septum, which was uh, still uh, uh, intrauterine in, in the, in the, in the, in the isthmic part. Uh, so she uh, got pregnant after first attempt of the IVF and she had a C-section at 39, at 39 weeks. And uh, she's okay. And the old baby is okay. So thank you very much.
Uh, thank you so much for these wonderful videos, uh, Dr. Gergulo. So now we have some questions from the audience. I will uh, translate them to English and uh, we would like to uh, hear your comments. The first one, uh, as I see here, uh, it is to Professor Pabucu. Uh, what about your, uh, uh, your opinion of per, uh, injecting P P PRP? on endometrium. Uh, what is your experience on it? And uh, how about uh, its effect on the uh, thickening of the endometrium after the uh, uh, adesiolysis surgery? Well, it is very interesting question, but unfortunately we don't have enough experience. Just Rudy Campo mentioned about this uh, protocol after adesiolysis. Uh, at the beginning, just we were putting some uh, PRP into uterine cavity, but right now for uh, for one month or one and a half month after the surgery, uh, we are trying to put some PRP about 10 cc or PRP uh, by using the needle uh, under under the. Uh, guidance of the office stereoscopy to the subendometrial layer. And then uh, we are putting uh, uh, silicone balloon inside. And then they, they are saying for two months, but I don't know what will happen. There's It's a painful process. We will see what will happen. But uh, this is preliminary uh, results. Yet. We didn't get the all results. I don't know. What do you think, Marco, about this issue? Yeah, I don't have experience with the PRP. Uh, also, I, I am aware that through the cap of starting this, they have also a particular tool, tool to, to inject this. Uh, but it seems that it's very, very promising. Yeah. yeah. OK. So the next question, uh, how about uh, doing concomitant laparoscopy in difficult cases, like uh, you are doing surgery on T-shaped uterus or uh, or whatever. I mean, is ultrasonography is enough or have you ever uh, thought of performing concomitant laparoscopy? The question asks this. At the beginning, we were doing concomitant simultaneous laparoscopy together with hysteroscopy, but right now, we uh, in our hand, we have very good ultrasonographic machine, even uh, even 3D, 4D vaginal probe and then uh, convex probe. So we are not uh, performing uh, concomitant laparoscopy anymore. What do you think, Marco? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Of course, performing uh, intraoperative abdominal uh, ultrasound is not so precise, but it's it's just important to know where you are, you know, uh, if, if you are close to the fundus or you are still in the, in the cervix, because sometimes you really don't know, especially, for example, you also, when, also when you have some uh, cyst muscle, cyst muscle, when you come inside, you, you think that you are in the, in the uterine cavity, but you are in the cyst muscle after the C-section, in the, in the niche of the C-section, and then you have to, to, to just to find the, the, uh, the, um, internal loss and to and to go into the into into the cavity so when you have some doubt when you have the ultrasound machine on the in the op theater you can control it and you know exactly where you are so you can avoid problems with the perforation okay thank you there is another question uh, how about using a uterine uh, balloon as a stent do you prefer such an uh, intervention yeah, balloon is much, uh, much, uh, much, uh, much most preferable uh, tool should be because it is reasonable. The, it is dil uh, it is dilatating the cavity. If uh, if the patient doesn't feel a lot of pain, and then uh, and again. Uh, <coughs> If we prevent the patient from the infection, I think it will be very helpful. 
And during this procedure also, uh, like uh, Stefano uh, said, uh, after PRP, two or three days or two weeks later, uh, we are inserting, we are injecting some hyaluronic acid gel inside. Okay. There is another question. Uh, when you are starting to, uh, to uh, open a complete Asherman syndrome, do you make an adjustment in the pressure? Do you make an adjustment in the uh, hysteroscopic pressure? The question is this. Well, what do you think, Marco? No, you, you, you, you have the pressure that you, you need. So of course, when you have a patient which is awake, you don't, go, you don't have to go over 18, 90 millimeters of, uh, of uh, mercury, but uh, um, you can, in some case, you can increase the pressure in order to distend the uterus, of course. Also in the, in the surgery, you can, for a few minutes, you can increase a little bit more the pressure, not too much, but you can increase it. Okay, thank you. And there is another question. In every uh, septum case, do you need to measure the lateral wall thickness by 4D or 3D, whatever, uh, because uh, to find out any association between the T-shape and septum? Uh, so in, in case you are doing a septum resection, do you need to measure lateral wall thickness by 4D so that maybe you will also need to do some <laughs> lateral resection? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for this question. It is very, very discussable thing. So according to extra classification, unfortunately, this pathology is not described. So most of the time we are discussing this issue with Marco, with Grimbizis, with our, uh, other Pacheco, uh, with uh, uh, Arthur, etc. So uh, in my experience, in the majority of the cases, uh, if the patient has septum, at least uh, 25, uh, 85 or uh, 75 of this group has uh, concomitant uh, T-shaped pattern. So uh, what I understood this issue, at, if you start the surgery at the internal os level, you should see both osteum, tubal osteum. Otherwise, you cannot cut the septum symmetrically. So, uh, and then at the beginning, uh, first of all, I was trying to cut lateral wall to see both tubal osteum. And then I was starting to cut the septum. And then I realized that in majority of the septum cases has uh, lateral wall thickness or T-shaped pattern. So after uh, measuring of uh, the lateral wall thickness, mostly uh, I am seeing that uh, in these cases has also a lateral uh, T-shaped pattern. So at the same time, not only I'm cutting the septum, uh, but only we are cutting off the lateral wall together. What do you say? So this pathology I think we should describe another group as a U to see something. Huh? What do you, Marco? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, oh, because you know also the the classification which was proposed by Alonso, Luis Alonso. No, he says that uh, in the in the group of the of the uh, dysmorphic uterus U1, you can have the T shape, the Y shape, which is subtate and T, and uh, and the I shape, which is only a, a very narrow and uh, straight, like an I uh, uterus. And uh, yeah, we could have this. Uh, the, so the dysmorphic U1, T, Y, or, or, or I, something like this. <laughs> okay. Okay, there is another question. Uh to Mr. Uh, Gargoli, in case of in case you in case of a large antique septum, do you sometimes prefer to resection of the septum, uh, just like uh, Professor Betoci has shown us, or only cutting of septum is enough in case of large no, antique? I, I I I I am doing uh, now uh, uh, cutting a normal cutting of the septum. 
for right now. Uh, we'll see uh, the results of the research, which are, is conducted by Stefano, and when is we will see that it's more effective and we have uh, better results after this section. We could start also with this technique. Thank you. And a, a very common question uh, in septum procedure, when to stop? <laughs> uh, when to stop? We, the question is very, uh, I, also in this case, you, you can, uh, it's very helpful the 3D ultrasound because you exactly can measure the, the thickness. So uh, you, you put a line between the two ostia and you measure the thickness, but sometimes the thickness is 10, 12 millimeters. And so you can cut the septum until the level of the ostia. But sometimes the, uh, the, the, the, the distance between the interosteal line and the outer part of the uterus is not one millimeter, it's seven millimeters. So in this case, you cannot cut until the line, but you can, it would be a little bit shorter. And also I have noticed that when you reach the, uh, the uh, muscular layer, so when the color of the septum changes before you have it's white and then becomes red, uh, you can stop. Okay. Uh, I, I, you you will see also that when you are cutting the septum, and you you feel that the resistance of the tissue is bigger. At at the same time, uh, this resistance is more elastic. Uh, when the, the color changes, when it's not more white but it's red, the tissue is also when you are uh, when you are pressing with the knife without electric, with just uh, to tip and, uh, and, uh, and to, to, to, to control the elasticity, we'll see the, the tissue is more elastic and then you can, you can stop at that time because the, you, you have reached the muscular layer. Yeah, uh, Jam, we have to be careful, especially for big, big corneate uterus, otherwise we can Absolutely. perforate. As, as Marco said, if the thickness of the uh, fundal part is thin or uh, less than one centimeters, we shouldn't advance so much. And there is a new classification uh, in SK classification. There is a bicornate septate uterus. Uh, yeah, this is very common. This is very common. Yeah. Bicornate septate uterus. So when okay. you are doing the septum resection, you should be aware that the sebation is also bicornate yeah. uterus. Uh, it's much more common the bicorn weight septate than the bicorn weight normal. You, you can find a lot of time when you find the bicorn weight sept, the uterus, you, the, usually it's sept, completely septate with a double cervix or, the, or with a septate cervix. Uh, yeah, this is very important, important point. Time. Thank you. Uh, I would just to say something with the uh, uh, uh, consider the, the previous question. It's not a shame to perform the uh, the uh, metroplasty in two times. You can do uh, a metroplasty, then you can leave it. You control after two months, you, you see the resemblement of the uterus, you measure again the septum, and uh, when you need, you can do a second surgery uh, to correct two, three, four, five millimeters. Uh, it's better to go, go a little bit short the first time than to go too deep uh, in the first time. So better to do it two times and to be a little bit uh, more uh, careful. Very good point, yes, thank you, very good point. Uh, last two questions, what, what do you think about, I mean, uh, what do you think about hysteroscopic isthmoplasty for the treatment of isthmocell? Yeah, what is uh, the I am performing the Gubini technique, you know, the Gubini technique, you can find it also on the YouTube, the Gubini isthmo, isthmoplasty with the mini resectoscope or the Gubini. And uh, it's very good. And because you uh, increase the, the uh, uh, outflow of the, of the blood, menstrual blood, so reduce the inflammation of the cavity, uh, you reduce the inflammation of the part of the, of the, of the isthmocyl, so the patient has less pain during the, the intercourses and uh, the uh, menstrual pattern is better, the, she, has, she doesn't have any more this uh, spotting after menstruation and so on. And also the fertility is increased. It's very nice for the procedure is 10 minutes, uh, but it's, uh, I think it's very nice. 
but the distance the um, the distance of the measurement of the isthmus cell not uh, should be more than one centimeter or eight millimeters otherwise the laparoscopy is necessary but the small yeah, yeah, isthmus yeah. But yeah, the smallest cell, yeah, hysteroscopic resection is the best procedure. Yeah, I have to be careful, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one point I, wish I should want to make an emphasis is that when you have an uh, Asherman syndrome, especially a severe one, you should definitely use office hysteroscope. And just like Professor Betuji told, uh, showed us when trying to enter the cervix, which is an obstructed cervix, he used a... Uh, uh, uh, he used an in instrument to open it up. And in, in the uh, Asherman syndrome, when you enter into the, uh, in, into a cavity, whether if it is, a, you cannot differentiate if it's a cervix or is, if it's a, the fundal area, then you should use this uh, pants instrument to probe any small opening with the uh, uh, opening and then you can find your way. This is, I think, one, one thing that should, should be mentioned because sometimes you are not sure if you are in the cervix or if you're in the fundal area, if you are seeing a small opening that you can go through or if you are seeing the uh, tubal osteum. So you, you could probe with the pants and you can find your way. It's, it's very in helpful. My, yeah, okay. In my experience, as I am talking about, I am mentioning about the severe cases Complete Asherman, you, you mean, right? And then, uh, first of all, I am trying uh, to use hysterometry. And if I able, if we'll be able, if we'll be able to reach the fundal part, of, of course, under ultrasonographic examination, and then I am starting uh, to, I am starting to perform office hysteroscopy, the uh, scope. Okay. One more question. Uh, he, uh, in case of hydrosalpings, can you use hysteroscope to do tubal blockage? <laughs> yeah. We used so, to do it, but now we don't have this. I had some experience, but unfortunately, it is not successful process. What do you say, Marco? My, I, I remember that was uh, a, a group of uh, uh, hysteroscopists that have put the Assure into, into the... Uh, uh, tuba in the to the tubal ostium, uh, but I don't know because they left uh, half of a shore inside the cavity, you know, which I didn't, I don't think is very nice for the pregnancy. And there was also, uh, there was also some perforation, I think, of the of the yeah. of the salpings. And, and I don't know, yeah, and then it was if forbidden. I, if, I have a, if I have a hydro salpings. Uh, uh, uh, I prefer to perform laparoscopy and resolve yeah. the problem. There is a Maybe. very good prospective randomized study comparing uh, laparoscopic salpingectomy to the hysteroscopic assure blockage, and it showed very clearly that uh, laparoscopic salpingectomy is much superior. So yeah. uh, after that study, nobody is attempting to block hydrosalpings with assure. Yeah, yeah, they have. Uh, they saw a lot of complications such as sepsis, uh, perforation, and, uh, and infection. But uh, if the opening area is smaller than we expect, sometimes uh, you can use, of course, if the patient has severe abdominal surgery, it is uh, it was too difficult to uh, perform the laparoscopy, maybe you can try by using Bipolar system uh, and uh, uh, rollerball, maybe. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I see no more questions. I thank you so much for your participation, for taking so your valuable time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Thank you for the invitation. Hope to see you in physical <laughs> meetings. See you in Turkey soon. I love very much. I love very much. Yeah, yeah Marco, th thank Turkey. you very much. I see I see uh, behind you uh, Mustafa Kemal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. I, uh, we are always together with Mustafa Kemal. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Hocam, rica hocam. Teşekkür ederiz. Bye bye bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Betuçi'ye çok teşekkür ederiz. Hoşçakalın.
Katılımcılara da dinledikleri için tabii çok ve güzel sorular için teşekkür ediyoruz. Bir dahaki webinarda buluşmak üzere. Hoşçakalın.